Jesus, oh Jesus, there's just something about your name. Master, Savior, Jesus, you're like the fragrance after a rain. Jesus, oh Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms, oh, they'll all pass away, but there's something about your name, Jesus. Hi, this is Pastor Dale. Um, I just wanted to... Um, let you know that you're about to hear a story about a, something that happened today. Um, it is October the 26th, 2024. Uh, when I had an encounter with a young man that I've known for quite a while, but I hadn't seen him in like several years. His name is Wally. Uh, it's not his real name. Um, but I wanted you to listen to what the encounter was today and about some other encouraging words uh, in the hopes that... Um, this man will eventually give his life to the Lord Jesus Christ because right now he's going through a lot. And I wanted to share these few moments with you and ask you to pray with me for this man. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Dale. Um, I'm kind of quiet this evening because I had received a uh, message from a young man that uh, used to work for the same company I worked for. Uh, down in Gaithersburg, Maryland. And uh, at the time that I first met him, he was probably in his uh, mid-20s. Um, and now he's 33 years of age. And uh, when I met him the first time, he was uh, seemed to be doing quite well. Um, he had a nice home. He lived with his parents. Um, and was, I think one of his brothers or something like that uh, in Gaithersburg. And uh, we gave him a chance uh, to work for the company that we had. Unfortunately, he it didn't pan out later on, uh, but for the most part, he was a good worker. He was very dependent. Uh, we could count on him to be there all the time. And he was never late and things like that. Um, and then once the company moved from Gaithersburg uh, to Alexandria, Virginia, uh, a lot of us were let go uh, because of the move and they were making all kinds of changes and things like that. So, including myself, but I was the office manager at the time, and. Uh, I, I was one of the ones that go uh, along with, with with my friend, and uh, I'm just going to call him Wally. Okay. Um, once we did, went our different ways, because uh, I, I returned to Frederick, and, uh, and then I started working for another organization. Uh, and, and Wally, I'm not sure really what happened to him from there. I didn't really know until today. Uh, but today. Or earlier this week, I had received a message from him asking if I could come down and see him um, because he was really going through some things and he needed to talk to somebody. So uh, I was more than willing to go down and, and talk with him. And um, it's, it's been <laughs> and it's weird that I was able to because it's been a very weird week uh, in that God has really done an amazing job in my life um, this week. Uh, my car broke down and the... Um, the, the cost of repair was really quite high, and uh, we're still working on that, praise Jesus. But uh, I was able to get a rental car through my insurance company, and uh, I went down and saw this young man. And when I first pulled up in front of the house he lived in, I walked up to the door and knocked on the door, and in fact, I knocked a couple times, and there was no answer. Um, it was not the best house in the area. Um, you could tell it was not well taken care of, and there was a lot of, uh, it just was a scruffy looking home. And so I didn't get a response at the door, so I went back to the car, and I sent him a message through uh, Facebook Messenger. And I said, Wally, uh, I'm out front here, 
I've uh, been waiting for you. I knocked a couple times on the door. And then a couple seconds later, I received a message, of, I'll be right out. I looked up, sure enough, he was coming out. And uh, he had changed uh, you know, quite a bit, of course, that'll do that to a person, you know, who suffered every several years. So we had the chance to, to start talking, and um, I could tell he was you know, hungry. So uh, we went and bought some coffee and uh, got him a sandwich at the uh, Dunkin' Donuts. And so we just sat there and we chatted and we talked about a lot of things. And one of the things that he brought up was the fact that he is struggling very strong, very serious struggle with alcohol. And uh, he told me, he said, that this thing has really got a hold of me. Uh, he said, this is just, it's just, I, I, I don't know what to do. And, uh, you know, I'm fighting it and I know I need to quit, but it's so doggone hard. He says, I don't know which way to turn, what to do. I just need, I need a job. I lost my job because I was drinking went to work uh, intoxicated. He had a very good job, too, uh, working for the Maryland uh, fire, Firefighters uh, Organization. And he'd worked there for several years, uh, but because he came in intoxicated, uh, he confessed to me um, that he lost his job. He said they don't tolerate any sort of alcoholism at all. Uh, they don't to tolerate anybody coming in high or intoxicated, I should say. So he lost his job, and he's been out of, been out of work for you know, a few months now. And uh, unfortunately, he cannot get unemployment because, uh, you know, the reason for losing the job was because he was intoxicated. So he is he is struggling, especially with alcoholism. And we had a chance to really talk. And, and we sat in the car and I, I, I asked him, I said, let me ask you a question, Wally. I said, what is your relationship with Jesus Christ? And I started to minister to him, you know, about the Lord Jesus Christ and how Christ you know, can change people, how he changed my life, how he changed the lives of several of my friends who've also been, had been in the past uh, struggling with alcoholism. Um, and for a while he listened, but you know how the enemy comes along and all of a sudden he's distracted and he got off the subject and would not get back on the subject of it again. So uh, the only thing that I could do at that point uh, was to take him back home. And he did ask me if, if I had some uh, money on me. And I told him no, but I don't carry cash with me usually. Um, and then he said, well, would, you, would you mind stopping by a, a liquor store and uh, getting me a bottle? And I refused. I said, no, Wally, I won't do that. I won't buy a person cigarettes. I won't buy a person alcohol. And I certainly won't give a person money who I know is using narcotics. Um, he understood. He really did. And, uh, unfortunately, I, you know, I had to drop him off. There's nothing more at this particular point that I can do, but my main reason for talking about this is that because there's, I'm telling you, man, the world is hurting in a major, major way. Uh, I'm not going to give up on all of it. I absolutely refuse to give up on him, and I'm going to keep working with him. I'm going to uh, do my best to, uh, to help him out in every way that I can, um, especially through prayer and, and you know, getting some advice from, from some people. Um, we all need advice from you know, in different situations. So I'm going to post this because I want people to look up my friend Wallet. He is a very nice young man. He really is. And uh, he has a lot of potential. I gave him a lot of good things today um, to do. And uh, he, he got right on it. I mean, he started looking for a job immediately. I mentioned a couple of places that he should go or try. And lo and behold, he, he was able to get an application in. And then he told me something that, that really surprised me. Uh, he said, I've known him for quite a while, and he's done, he's, he's quite talented. He's, he's got a lot of skills. But he told me his dream job is to work for the United States Post Office. And I said, what? He said, absolutely. He said, the daily drive, I love, ever since I was a little boy, uh, I just wanted to work for the post office. And I encouraged him to get down to the post office or to get online and to get an application. Um, I said, but you're going to have to clean up because they're, they're not going to accept anybody to walk in there. Uh, that you're probably going to have to take a urine test and, uh, some, or some sort of test to see if you are on any sort of uh, narcotics, if you get you know, to the initial interviews and so on and so forth. Um, and so that's where we're at right now. I'm, uh, he does not have insurance, so we're going to try to work on getting him some state insurance. Uh, possibly, I can talk him into going into a... a a recovery program that would benefit him. Um, as I said, I, I really like this young man. He's, he's, uh, 
Of course, anybody's young to me. I'm 78. I mean, you can be 50 years old. You're young to me, okay? Uh, but anyways, he is he is in his 30s. And, and, uh, I, I was kind of teasing him. I said, so how old are you now? And he said, I'm 33. I said, hmm, isn't that interesting? I said, did you know that Jesus was crucified when he was 33? He goes, what? He said, well, that's pretty deep. And I said, yes, it is. But he did it for you, and he did it for me. And uh, we need to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to tell people where the real help is from. The real help is from our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Christ can change lives. I have seen him change lives with people in my own life. My closest friend, my, my closest and dearest friend here in Frederick, I have seen God work miracles in this man's life. And I'm so proud to know him and have him as my brother. And then there's another young man that I'm, I now deal with in the church. And, and he too struggled at one time uh, with addiction. And the way that Christ has turned his life around and got him into church and things. And I'm telling you, Jesus can do, man, there's, there's no one he can't change. No one. So if you're struggling with something, I'm, for, for example, uh, my brother Russell, uh, who's, who's on Facebook every day, every morning, Monday through Friday with a meditation around 6.30 a.m., and I would encourage you to, his name is Russell Seitz, S-C-I-T-E-S. You should really, really tune in to him because he's got a good meditation in the mornings around 6.30. But anyways, Russell also really fought with addictions. And one day he was in prayer. Um, he was in prison at the time. Um, I got to know him by uh, by going to the prison. But Bishop Grayson and myself used to go to the prison at the, in Sykesville uh, every Sunday. And we got to know Russell through this. And Russell gave us testimony of how much he was strung out on, on, uh, on alcohol and narcotics. And the way that Jesus Christ changed his life around. Um, he had talked to God one night about you know, his addiction and so on and so forth. And God clearly told him, he says, you don't need recovery, you need Jesus. And he said, Jesus will change you. And I'm telling you, man, Russell has been on fire ever since. Um, just as I said, also my best friend James. Um, and just in and, and young David, just to watch God do the things that he's doing in their lives and how he's blessing them. See, Jesus will change. He changed my life. He changed my life drastically. I mean, you know, it's it's incredible because most of you know my testimony. You know, uh, <laughs> I was pretty bad when I, when I was younger. I was pretty bad. and But Christ has given me hope. Christ has given me uh, a, a new lease on life, if that's what you want to call it. Christ Jesus has changed my life completely around. If you don't know Jesus Christ, listen, listen. As my friend would say, listen, listen, okay? Get to know him. You know, go to a pastor that, you know, that you could trust from a Bible-believing church uh, or, or a friend that you know who is a Christian, not a close friend. Uh, go to them and talk to them about Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, if I felt comfortable with giving my information online, I would, but I don't. Um, but I will leave my email, my, my email is freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, 92909 at outlook.com. It's all small casing, freedom, 92909 at outlook.com. And contact me, and I would be more than glad to talk to anybody about the Lord Jesus Christ and what he can do in our lives. Uh, I'm getting ready this, uh, hopefully this coming week, to do a couple very strong videos um, that I think are going to shake a few people up because there's a lot of people uh, in my life from the past who, who have no idea the life that I lived out there, including some members of my family. But the time has come for me to get the testimony that, that God has wanted me to share for a long time out. In fact, I'm doing uh, my biography right now, my autobiography on it, um, and it's called On the Way Home, On My Way Home. Um, it's, it's, it's a good book. Um, you're going to see how God moved in my life, the things that he's done in my life, and uh, the people he brought in my life to help me in, in my growth. I've got some very, very, very wonderful close friends, like David Cindy up in Michigan, and, and Johnny T, and Don, and um, John C, and Pastor John, uh, and Pastor, Pastor Richard and Charlotte, my friend Lorraine, I love her deeply, and April. I mean, I could just go on and give you an entire list, my sister Rita. I could just give you a huge, huge list of people that have been in my life and affected my life and influenced my life in a major way. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ is the answer. He really, really is. You know, Jesus says that no one comes to the Father but through him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father but by me. 
you know, you could try to go to all the religions you want. When Wally and I talked today, he said that when I mentioned Jesus, he said, well, I, I believe in God. And I said, I'm, I'm not asking you that. I said, what is your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, I believe in God. I said, a lot of people believe in God, but that doesn't mean they're going to go to heaven. And I said, I asked him a question. I said, Wally, let me ask you this question. If you was to die right now, let's say that somebody come along and they shot um, into the car and killed me and killed you. Where would you go? See, I know where I'm going. I'm going to the kingdom of God. I'm going to be with my father. I'm going to be in heaven forever and ever, eternity. Okay? Hallelujah. Can't wait. He looked at me and he said, it doesn't make any difference where I go. And I said, Wally, it does. You don't want to spend your time in hell. You really don't. Because spending time in hell is the worst thing that could happen to an individual. And I couldn't get this through him enough, but as I said, uh, we know how the enemy doesn't want to hear the message, and of course he distracted him and all kinds of stuff. But I'm not giving up on him. I'm going to keep after him. I'm going to keep helping him out. I'm going to keep reaching out to him the best way I can and let him know that I love him and that Jesus Christ loves him even more than I do and that someone really does care for him. I'm telling you, telling people that you care for them, man, makes all the difference in the world. And that's that's what I like about my friends. But, you know, they're not ashamed to tell me that, hey, Dale, I love you. And uh, especially especially my, my sister Lorraine, she's she's such an angel, man, such a sweetheart. Um, she's real quick to tell me, I just love you, man. And and my pastors, you know, they're 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 just terrific. Richard, Charlotte, uh, they're quick to give you a hug and tell you they love you. And it comes from their heart. Uh, when I first come to Frederick, Maryland, I, I, I joined a church called First Love International Ministries. Um, and Pastor Gerald Banks, uh, Jerry Banks, was the uh, the pastor of the church. And my bishop, Bishop Robert Grayson, who's with the Lord now, hallelujah, he was my mentor and my best friend. I mean, I love this guy. Boy, do I miss him, too. But anyways, um, so Jerry, the pastor, or I'm sorry, Bishop Grayson suggested that I find First Love Church, and go to it, and start attending. So so I did. Um, I found where the church is at, and I said, okay, I can do this. And I went to this church, and I'm going to tell you something. From the minute I walked in that door, love hit me straight in my face, man. I have never felt the love that I felt at that particular church. And that's why, you know, to this day, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and, and love being a part of that church, because it is it's a church of pure love. They don't judge people. They don't condemn people. They don't talk bad about people. They just reach out in love and let people know that Christ is the answer. He can change your life. I don't care who you are. If you're the president of the United States or if you're the biggest bum in the world, God has the same love for both of them. You see, God's not a uh, uh, respecter of persons. He doesn't favor one over another. God's love is for everybody and it's the same love he doesn't love one person more than he does another let me share something with you i want to tell you how much god loves us that when jesus prayed uh the high priestly prayer in john 17 did you know that jesus himself asked his father god almighty to give to you and me the same love that he has for jesus so whatever love God has for Jesus, he gave it to us. He asked God to give us the same measure of love. Man, that's a lot of love because the Father loved his son Jesus. And I am the same way. I love my Lord Jesus Christ. He is my eternal Lord and my Savior. He is my master, my redeemer. He is my strength and my hope. I mean, he's just everything to me. So if you don't know Jesus Christ, please, 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 please. Ask him into your heart. It's very simple. You don't have to go through a lot of ritual. I mean, you go to churches and churches say, all right, everybody with your heads down and eyes closed. I want you to repeat his words after me. No, 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 no. You know, when I come to Jesus Christ, let me tell you something. There was nobody there to lead me to Jesus Christ. Nobody. No one gave me the words to say and all this other stuff. And here's the difference. When I came to Jesus Christ, it came from in my heart. You know, I don't. I particularly don't like it when I hear a pastor get up there and state, I want you to say these words. No, no, no. Every individual that comes to Jesus Christ, it should be from within their own heart, from their words. And, and so my advice is just to, you know, man, just say something like this, like, 
God, I don't know you. I don't know Jesus. This is what I did. I said, God, I, I don't know you that well. I was just kind of raised in a church, but I didn't know you. I know nothing about Jesus. I didn't know Jesus could be my friend. I didn't know that, that your love was so deep. And so I'm asking for a chance. I'm asking for the opportunity, Lord, you know, to have you come into my life and change my life. And I'm going to tell you, man, God answered that prayer quick because it came from in here. It didn't come from some other man's words or some other lady's words. No, it came from in here. God understands what you're asking for. He really does. So if you just go to him and say, God, I, I've, I've listened to Pastor Dale, and I'm, I, I'm not sure really what to do, but I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus, and I'm, I'm asking for help. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a, be a follower of Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, when you do that, man, your life is going to change, man. I'm telling you. I don't care whether you're male, female. I don't care whether you're tall, short, fat, chubby like me, or, or skinny. I don't care if you're black, if you're red, if you're brown, or you're white. It makes no difference to me. I don't care if you're an American, a Russian, uh, an Australian, an Englishman, um, South African, Kenyan. I don't give a rat's banana who you are, okay, or from what your nationality is. I don't care um, what language you speak. God has one language for all of us, and that's love through Jesus Christ. So if you're a Christian and you're watching this, hey, come on, man, let's get busy and tell the world about Jesus because Jesus truly is the answer. You won't believe this, man. I just wanted to get out here and just say a couple minutes, and here it is already almost 20 minutes. Man, I just pray that I touch somebody. Um, I love you very much. Pray for my friend Wally. He's a terrific young man. He really is. And let's ask God to change his life around. Let's ask God to deliver him from what he's going through right now, especially the alcoholism, and see if we can get him into a good Christian-based program uh, where he will have a face-to-face -face confrontation with the Lord Jesus Christ in some way. It doesn't have to be physically face-to-face, -face, but you understand what I'm saying. If you're a believer, you know exactly what I'm saying. So this is Pastor Dale. Um, God bless you all. Don't forget the election is coming up if you're a Christian. Please, please, Christians, vote. You've got to vote. I don't care who you vote for. you just got to vote. I mean, I do care, but I'm not going to say anyway. you got to vote. Because voting, the only way this country is going to change is if we speak up ourselves. Because we can't allow the enemy to keep walking, uh, try to walk and stamp out Christianity. It's not going to happen because God is in charge. God is sovereign. This country will never be stomped out by the by the devil. Never. I don't care what he says. I don't care what tactics he uses. He will never, ever, ever, ever stomp out the Lord God Almighty or the Lord Jesus Christ. We can believe this and we can be rest assured of it. God is forever. God is eternal. God is sovereign. He knows exactly what has to be done. He knows things about you and when it's going to happen way before you do. God has the answer. He has everything taken care of. When I... Uh, do my testimony pretty soon uh, on what's happened this past week, uh, on especially about, about a prayer that I have. Uh, you're going to hear, and, and I hope you tune in. I really do, because you're going to hear some some an awesome, awesome testimony uh, about what God did this week and what God has done in my life. And uh, I just love the Lord with all my heart, and I pray that you do too. So if you need help, you can reach out to me through my email, freedom92909 at outlook.com, freedom92909. Uh, out at at Outlook.com, there we go. Uh, I'm on Facebook, I'm on uh, X, and I'm on Instagram. So, man, come on. Let's reach out. Let's fellowship. And let's tell the world about Jesus. Amen. He's the only one that I know that can change everything. God bless you. I love you all in Jesus Christ. Good night.